Joining me now is Jonathan and Drew Scott, the co-stars of HGTV's Property Brothers. Guys, it's great to see you here. Thanks for joining us. No problem. Yes. So Property Brothers is such a huge success, and I, I want to talk to you guys about this notion of the stay-at-home economy, where people aren't going out as much anymore. They're investing in their homes so they can stay home and watch Netflix. What do you guys make of that trend? Well, we call it staycation. Ah. I mean, you spend so much money on your house. You spend so much money putting in the features that you want to have. And nowadays, people are doing more like theaters or home gyms. If you're spending all this money, then why spend more money to go away on a vacation to some other property when you can actually just enjoy or time Or maybe people home. are just less so, maybe people are anti-social these days and they want to stay in their home. I don't know what it is, but at the end of the day, if you're creating these spaces that basically make your home work harder for you, mm -hmm. I think that's what it's all about. Your home should make your life easier. And what are some of the interesting features that people want, right? I mean, you guys were talking earlier about, you know, a self-flushing toilet. I mean, it's bizarre. Yeah. Who doesn't want a self-flushing <laughs> toilet? Uh, Technology is a huge thing. Energy efficiency, um, solar, for example. We, we converted our home in Vegas to solar. It's almost, most of the year, it's completely run by solar. You yeah, have, yeah, as well, like the theater rooms, entertainment rooms. So people will have, uh, you know, for example, in my house, I'm putting in a screen that will, will come down out of the ceiling so you can have a large screen instead of just a regular TV. And then being able to c control things remotely, you know, whether you want to change temperature, turn lights on and off. Just don't do what Drew does and freak out his fiance <laughs> by remotely. He'll be in another city and he'll have a TV go on in another room so she hears voices and just lights mess coming with her on. Mind. Hey there. He's yeah. going to be single very soon. <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you, because every homeowner has a wish list, right? They want, you know, this type of flooring or this type of countertop. How is the wish list different for men versus women? Okay, first off, I'm going to tell you uh, the wish lists are always here for budget. And then what they can afford is always here. Um, I, I would actually say that so guys think, for example, like a contingency. Your budget, you have your budget, and then you have a contingency for any problems that come up during a renovation, for example. Or if you're purchasing a place, you always have a little bit of a buffer. Guys think that's for a big screen TV. Mm. Women are usually a little bit more savvy, but they also think about the family spaces of the home. Um, Everybody adds stuff on. Yeah. Add-ons are out. Even Drew, so we're renovating Drew and his fiance's house right now in Los Angeles. They're doing add-ons because what? once the space is coming together, they're like, you know, this would be really cool. So you have to really be diligent when you set your budget and understand what's going into it and understand what things you could always add down the road that aren't going to cost any more than they would right now. Um, and those are the smart decisions. But the things, once the, when the walls are open during a renovation, those are the things that you want to make sure you get the right insulation, the right technology behind the walls, because you don't want to go tearing a wall back open after. Whether it's uh, you know female or male um, buyers, husband or wife, um, all buyers tend to get emotionally charged, whether they're buying, selling, or renovating. And that's why us as professionals are here. It's the same with Chase Bank when they're on the lending side of it. All of us professionals are here to try and pull the, pull the emotion out of it, give you that third party opinion as to what you can do to protect yourself. And bring them back to reality. And then bring them back to yeah. reality. That's exactly it. You can't make emotional decisions with the biggest investment in your life. Now, what is your advice for the millennial home bar? We know millennials obviously are burdened with student loan debt, credit card debt. It's hard for them to be able to save for a down payment. It is. So looking at creative ways to get into a home and don't never be desperate to get into home ownership because that's a great way for you to guarantee you'll fail. Um, but sometimes we'll have people that will partner with a family member so that the two of them can get into home ownership or they'll partner with somebody else. Maybe they'll have a rental suite uh, so that instead of having to pay the mortgage cost themselves, they have something else. Mm -hmm. There are products that are designed so you don't have to have 25% to put down, mm -hmm. um, but you really need to be diligent in making sure that your credit's in line and that you're organized when you get into home ownership. We also have um, a part of the campaign with what we're doing with Chase. They have a snapshot on Google of what people are searching surrounding mm -hmm. home ownership. Okay. And uh, one thing that we've noticed for first time home buyers, searching in that category is up 44% from last year. So that's a good so sign. It's a really good sign. It means there are a lot of millennials, a lot of young buyers that are looking to get in there and, and get into home ownership. And the one thing to keep in mind is that not every product is right for every buyer. You, you have different lending products that um, can work for different people. And that's why it's important to talk with the professionals that can, can kind of lay that out for you and show you the best path for you to get into mm -hmm. home ownership. All right, and lastly, which is more important in the home buying process, the realtor or the contractor? <laughs> well, uh, the contractor mm. carries power tools, so you don't want to mess with Well, you out. wouldn't get to that point if it wasn't for me. And you wouldn't Whoa. get to my point if it wasn't for your lender. So it's sort of, it, it's that whole pie, right? It's you have all these pieces of the pie that really need to work together. All right, I think there's some sibling rivalry here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. I just asked you another one last question. Yes. Who brother versus brother this season. All right, this interview's over. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and with that, we'll end it there. Jonathan Drew Scott, thank, thank you for you. joining us. Thank really you. appreciate it.